Hello. Are you all ready for the new year? Aye. 2017 is about to be here. Everybody's going to get drunk and shit-faced, except for me. <laughs> Party. All sorts of crazy crap like that. I spilled some water on this table early today. It's still wet. Yeah. Kind of like a baby took a pee on this table. There's only water. Uh... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's crazy. He's crazy. Uh, four lenses here. Actually, one of the four I don't have here. And that would be the 35mm 1.8G. Not the 35mm 1.8G DX lens, which is a tiny little runt. But the 35mm 1.8G FX lens. All these are FX, and so is the 35mm 1.8G. Uh, the only reason I don't own that lens and I have used it... Uh, used it quite a bit. Um... It's because I've got more uh, 35 millimeter uh, lenses than God, basically, including a, a significant number of Zeiss 35 millimeter lenses. How did that get on that lens? I was using this last week. A little dirty spot there. So here are the four of them. Like I said, I don't have the 35 here, but here we have the 20 millimeter 1.8G Nikkor, the uh, 24 millimeter 1.8G Nikkor. They all look the same, basically. You can tell this is the 20 because it's got a huge uh, 77 millimeter. Or is it 82? I think it's 77. Yeah, 77. Should never question myself. And the 28 millimeter 1.8G Nikkor. All of these are spectacular. They're all FX lenses, perfectly suited also for use on DX cameras. If you have an FX camera, by the way, and you do any landscape, architectural, or, uh, yeah, architectural, landscape, photography, you're just a flat-out idiot if you don't own this lens. Let's see, 20mm 1.8G Nikkor. I mentioned previously this is a 24mm 1.8G Nikkor. To me, this is actually the perfect street lens um, for use not only in FX, but also for DX. When you have a DX pixel pitch, like on the D500 or D7200, that uh, tight informational detail per square millimeter of sensor combined with a very high resolution lens like this, what, get, what that does is it gives you the ability to crop the hell out of your shots and still maintain significant resolution. So high resolution combined with a tight pixel pitch, really awesome lens uh, for street photography. In my opinion, if I were just have one lens for street photography on a DX camera, it would certainly be the 24mm 1.8G Nikkor. Uh, not actually one of my least favorite focals ever is the 28. Not that there's anything wrong with the 28. It's actually perfectly ideal, uh, not only for FX for DX, but it's just kind of like the uh, fifth wheel, uh, nipples on a bull. Um, I was gonna make another analogy, but I won't do that. <laughs> it might upset somebody. Um, but also an absolutely excellent lens. Like a excellent lens. The only, like I said, the only reason I don't actually own the 35mm 1.8G is just I've got dozens and dozens of 35 millimeters from all over the place. Zeiss 35mm of two. Actually, the best value 35mm is a uh, the D series 35mm f2. Now I know that's an f2, not an f1.8. And my answer to that is, who gives a crap? Um, that lens actually has better uh, color saturation. It's a low element count lens. Autofocus, while not as fast, is nearly so as fast. I mean, a 35. None of these lenses are for sports and action or wildlife. So, fast autofocus speed. Who gives a damn? So the fact that that's a, a D series screw drive on the 35 millimeter f2 doesn't matter. You can find that lens used for like 180 dollars all day long from Japan. Orders of importance to me. Uh, 20 millimeter, uh, well, certainly okay. 30, for 30 millimeter field of view equivalent. I would never even consider using this on a, a DX crop sensor for any, for any reason. It's just literally out there in the middle of nowheresville. Uh, it's not useful for much of anything. This is a landscape architectural uh, lens for full frame use. So if you don't own a full frame uh, camera, I wouldn't consider getting the 20 millimeter, unless you found one for really, really cheap, which nobody ever sells this this lens. And there's a good reason why they never sell it, because it's incredible. Um, if you own a DX crop sensor camera, between these two, it's uh, not really a toss up. It's definitely the 24 millimeter uh, 1.8G right here, with an equivalent to field of view of uh, what 38 millimeters, right? 24, 34. Yeah, I was confusing that with the 28. 36, 38 millimeter. 
Uh, and the 28 millimeter 1.8G, my least favorite focal length. Actually, I don't know if that's my least favorite, but uh, it sits in the midway point between 24 millimeter and regardless of who makes the lens in 35 millimeter, I've always found the 28 millimeter bit. 28 millimeter to be somewhat on the useless side. However, for FX camera, actually the 28 millimeter has the uh, best uh, color saturation of the four lenses, including the 35 millimeter 1.8G. So as far as the best rendition, 20 millimeters is an ultra wide, uh, and that's absolutely the perfect for FX for portraiture and landscape. But between the 35 millimeter 1.8G, which I don't have here, the 24 millimeter 1.8G, and the 28, the 28 is definitely the best of them. So the best straight out of camera images possible on your D810 or other full frame camera. No questions about it. Um, resolution, there's not a hair's difference between the two, the 24, the 28, and the 35 millimeter 1.8G. 35 millimeter 1.8G actually has some saturation issues, not something you obviously can't fix in Lightroom or uh, Photoshop or whatever editor, uh, what other editing program it is you decide to use. Um, but all these are uh, beautiful, exquisite lenses, uh, all the way from the ultra wide 20 all the way to the 35 millimeter 1.8G. All of them, I think, are still the same price. I still think they're all 700 or 750. I know the 28 is 700. I think the 24 is also still 700. One of these, I believe, is now 750, and I think it's a 20 millimeter 1.8G. I think they jacked the price up 50 bucks on it, but they all were 700 dollars, and they all still are essentially 700 dollars. Um, you never see the 20 millimeter used anywhere. I mean, you, you you can, but it's almost non-existent because anybody who owns this lens knows how incredible it is. Uh, 24 millimeter it recently came out. The 28 millimeter has been around for quite a while. 20, the 35 millimeter 1.8 has not been, but the uh, the 24 millimeter is a new lens. Uh, relatively new lens uh, from Nikon, so there really aren't any of those used out there. There are, however, quite a few used uh, 28 millimeter uh, 1.8G Nikkors, as well as 35 millimeter 1.8Gs. However, the reason that there are so many 35 millimeter 1.8G FX, okay, not DX, which is a little bitty lens, but the FX 35 millimeter 1.8G is that of the four, it's the the poopiest of the four, and that's also another reason why I don't own the 35mm 1.8G Nikkor. There, I've got Zeiss 35mm, I've got God, I've got other various uh, Nikkor 35mm, i got lots of 35mm lenses and uh, just don't need it. Um, I guess that's it. Let me know if you have any questions on uh, these four lenses. Um, have used the 3518G extensively and love the three out of these. My favorite of the three is definitely the 24mm 1.8G. If I were an architectural landscape photographer, which I like to do, but I'm really not, um, it's definitely the 20mm 1.8G. As far as what's the best value all around in general, if you have FX or DX, it's definitely the 24mm 1.8G. If you have an FX camera, uh, it's definitely the 20 millimeter 1.8G. If you only have a DX camera, then it's definitely the 24 millimeter 1.8G, uh, unquestionably so. So I, I've not made another video like this, and I don't think there is another video out there like this comparing these four and contrasting them. So I thought this was a necessary video to make. Uh, all four of them are excellent. The 35 millimeter 1.8G is the crappiest of them. But when you say crappy, you have to you have to be honest with people. Say, so what do you mean it's crappy? I just thought you got done say it was great. It's like, yeah, but you know, like a, in a room full of beautiful women, uh, beautiful women, you know, it's the one that is you know slightly less than perfect. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to be relative to what it is you're talking about. So it's not a crappy lens per se, but relative to these three, it definitely is for several va several valid objective uh, existential reasons. So that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, drop a buck or two. Tell me, jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Thank you for watching. My 24mm 1.8G gets all the loving, too, by the way. I, I use that lens all the time. It's usually sitting on uh, my uh, D500, one of my D500s. The other, the other thing is permanently glued to my D500. It's a 17-55 to Nikkor. I said they're all basically the same price, too, by the way. 
Some people complain. They're like, yeah, they're also also all made in China, and they're kind of like a squeeze toy. Like, wee, wee. Not that bad, you know? Some of uh, my favorite Nikkor lenses are uh, plastic uh, or polycarbonate, technically, casing uh, lenses that are uh, made in China. So, no big deal there, you know? These are adequately and uh, realistically priced lenses. Unlike some lenses that are also made in China, like the 300mm f4 face Fresnel, that lens ain't worth $2,000. No way, no how. It's a $1,200 lens. So, anyway, I digress. Thanks for watching. Bye.